Hello everyone. This is a no damage playthrough of Silent Hill on hard difficulty. A no commentary version of this run can be found on the pinned comment in the comments section below. going Hey wait stop So anyway starting out We are uh, running into running into this alley over here as it goes you are forced to take a death very early on because the game cannot proceed unless you take a death so technically a true no damage run can only be done on new game plus but we'll just say that the actual no damage part of it doesn't start until after this nightmare sequence. backwards. Let the demon children grab us. Letting them grab is the quickest way to die. Not that speed actually matters here because this is a no damage playthrough. Speed strats don't really matter unless they are used for dodging enemies. If you start from New Game Plus, then you start directly from this cutscene, and you skip the nightmare sequence completely. Was I dreaming? How do you feel? Oh, like I've been run over by a truck. But I'm alright, I guess. Glad to hear it. You from around here? Why don't you tell me what happened? Wait a second, I'm just a tourist. I came here for a vacation. I just got here. I don't know what happened. I'd like to find out myself. Uh-huh. Have you seen a little girl just turned seven last month, short, black hair. My daughter. Sorry. The only person I've seen in this town is you. Where is everybody? 
I'd tell you if I knew, believe me. But from what I can tell, something bizarre is going on. That's all I know. Hmm. What's your name? Harry. Harry Mason. Sybil Bennett. I'm a police officer from Brams, the next town over. The phones are all dead, and the radio too. I'm going back to call in some reinforcements. Hmm. Hold it. Where do you think you're going? My daughter. I've got to find her. No way. It's dangerous out there. In that case, I need to find her now. Cheryl's my little girl. I can't just leave her out there by herself. Have you got a gun? Um, no. Take this, and hope you don't have to use it. Now listen to me. Before you pull the trigger, know who you're shooting. And don't do it unless you have to. And don't go blasting me by mistake. Got it? Yeah, thanks. You'd do best to stay nearby. I'll be back with help as quick as I can. Right, so, in the cafe, we have to pick up three items, the flashlight, the map, and the knife. We also get a handgun with 15 bullets, no extra ammo. Also, we have a tendency to bonk into walls a bunch. What's that? Huh, radio. What's going on with that radio? So you don't actually take damage here, you just get knocked down. It takes six shots on hard to kill that bat. This is not a dream. What's happening to this place? Okay, not bat. Air Screamer is uh, what they're called. We got a pocket radio and obviously work a lot harder than we need to in order to exit this fine establishment. Right about here, the game will try to direct you back into the alley where we first found Cheryl, but or where we lost Cheryl, but uh, we're not going there. There's a couple of handgun bullets here. So uh, it should be noted, I played this on PS3. Normally I try to play it on as close to the original console as I can, but because Silent Hill 1 has some capture issues, I wasn't able to. The game switches from 240p in-game, like the overworld sections where you're actually controlling Harry, is in 240p, but when you go into the menus, it switches resolution to 480i. And a lot of capture cards can't really handle that all that well. Even like the older ones. So, unless you have a capture card that treats everything as 480i, or a capture method that treats every input from the game console as 480i, it's like not happening. So, I uh, had to play on PS3, which has slightly muddier graphics, and is laggy. It's very, very laggy, and it also has poor sound emulation, but that's okay. So first up, gotta pay very close attention to these air screamers. The first one just kind of comes out of nowhere, flying at full speed. If you hear the uh, slower flapping, like where they're hovering, 
that noise right there, like the deeper, the deeper flapping sound, they're usually like staying in, staying in place there. And if you do that, then, you know, you can just generally shoot them a bunch and stun lock them. And of course, always finish them off with a stomp. But generally, whenever we hear the radio go off with these air screamers around, we want to take it nice and slow and do them one at a time. You could dodge them if you're good enough, but if you're trying to be careful, I wouldn't recommend it. Because you kind of have to dodge left and right. And in general, Harry is uh, pretty clunky, so dodging doesn't always work as we'd like it to. So that that one's just sitting there. If we uh, if we run up to him, we can just plant five or six bullets in him, put him down. There's another. Doing the hover noise, just stay about a few meters away and uh, keep shooting. Harry's gun automatically reloads every time you raise the R1, or every time you press the R1 button, basically. So every time you raise your gun, you get a free ammo refill. It's not infinite ammo as it looks. This only works in Silent Hill 1, obviously. Started flying pretty much immediately. My PS3 controller had some uh, gunk or something in the down button. So a lot of times when I would uh, hit down, I would wind up turning in reverse like a really cheaply made RC car. God, I hated those fucking things when I was a kid, didn't you? I actually don't need to fight this guy. He, uh, he actually spawns behind you, basically, while you're running forward. All the enemy positions on the overworld map are static. kind of learned that uh, as long as you just keep running down the same sidewalk after killing the uh, air screamer in the alleyway and picking up the handgun bullets there, we don't actually need to fight either of these other two air screamers, so it's an unnecessary risk. Basically, if you can get around an enemy without actually having to dodge them, then, or sorry, without having to fight them or dodge them, all that much, then you don't really have to worry about them. It is not a problem. Also, I'm sorry if my volume was over peaking a little bit. Everything's been sounding a little bit quiet on my end. <clears throat> Excuse me. The latest window update actually, uh, messed with a lot of my audio, so it's probably going to sound a little off. So we're going to walk up here when going to get the key from the doghouse. Whenever the dog is running towards us, we backpedal while shooting because the dog will get anti-aired if you can shoot him while he's leaping at you. I think it's like maybe at like the apex of the jump or something. But either way, the uh, safest thing to do is definitely take out both the dogs before checking the doghouse. Because if you bend down to pick up the key, then it could put you in an unfavorable position.
So when Silent Hill is all dark and shit, it's uh, a lot easier to generally keep your flashlight off and keep moving. It's uh, probably going to be a little dark. I hope your monitor is properly tuned because you're probably going to be looking at this for like half the game. <laughs> Welcome to Silent Hill. So we need to run in the general direction of the school. As long as we keep the flashlight off, enemies are always going to miss. Just kind of need to be vaguely aware of where you're going. So you could go into the menu and like hit the map if need be. Once we've reached the school, I'm gonna try and pick up as many handgun bullets as we can. Handgun bullets are generally the best option against most enemies. Also, this is where we're going to make our first save. So here we can keep the flashlight on. We gotta try to dodge in between these demon children. But you gotta be kinda quick about it. And then on the way back out we gotta shut the flashlight off because we're trying to head upstairs, which is directly to the right. I usually wait a sec before moving. Because by then, the uh, demon child that is blocking the double doors to the stairs is already hugging the wall. So we can just go straight around him. On hard mode, there's an extra demon child to the right. I grab the chemical. And then turn left and visit the room directly next door. There's more handgun bullets on this table here. Then we go to the left here. We're going to let these guys kind of come up close, and then we are going to take one wide arc around them. There's a lot of riskier dodges, but generally, for the most part, unless you can isolate them, the uh, demon children into like one on one encounters. Trying to shoot them is very risky because they're actually quite bullet spongy on hard. Especially since you need to stomp them before they can get back up. I uh, do not recommend fighting them in most situations. But the individual ones, you can definitely kill them so that you don't have to like stop and dodge them. Because in tight quarters, the general rule is if it's if you're going to be moving in tight quarters, then trying to kill 
enemies is the best option. Unless they're too spongy and you absolutely cannot, in which case you should probably think of a way to dodge them that is consistent. Silent Hill has some pretty rudimentary stealth mechanics though, so as long as you keep your flashlight off and you're walking, then you can generally move completely in the dark and just go from point A to point B. This is one of the few situations where killing them is actually okay. Like killing two of them at once is actually okay because they're pretty far away and you can you have a very clear view of them. So let's see, D key, A key, A sharp, G, C sharp. I hope I got that right. I'm very bad at piano. So after we pick up the silver medallion, two more of these guys are going to pop up. We still have exactly enough spacing to take them both out, but generally pay a lot of attention to your ammo count, because if you do not and Harry gets caught in a reloading animation, they're going to close the distance and they're going to grab you. In general with Silent Hill, you should never have to go back into the menu to reload, ever. Unfortunately, that one respawned. Sometimes enemies, even if you stomp them, can still respawn, but stomping them greatly decreases the chances of them coming back. It seems like the enemies in Silent Hill have like a preceded number of lives, I guess? Also, I accidentally went upstairs. I was supposed to go downstairs to the generator here. Silent Hill is uh, very much a labyrinth as far as survival horror games are concerned, so if you find yourself getting lost while trying to follow along with this video, don't feel bad. Let's see, there's still that one. Just barely squeezed in between him and the wall in time. But now that the power is on, we can go to Otherworld School. been here before? Hmm. I don't remember this being here before. So, heading in here, there's two demon children, one on either side of the northern hallway. We can grab the handgun bullets in here. We can still keep the flashlight on and just uh, hug the wall going into this room over here. And then we can uh, go up and right and go into the door, dodging the cockroaches along the way. The picture card is just sitting on the table here. We have to turn off the flashlight. I said we have to turn off the flashlight. Heading into this room here, 
and this is one of the rooms that I was talking about where you have to walk, so we're going to kind of slant Harry across the wall here until he runs into a corner, and then slant him across the other wall here, being mindful of a particular demon child that uh, has a roughly 1 in 3 chance of uh, being directly in your way. And uh, if you don't see him until you're halfway across that wall, then you can just go ahead and turn on the flashlight and make a dash for the door. Also, I almost got grabbed. Brilliant. I had to lower my aim there and re-raise it. Uh, do not do what I did here. I uh, actually got insanely lucky there. I shouldn't have done that. Why did I do that? Yeah, this, this, this room in general had very, very poor planning. You can do all three of these guys because there's no obstacles blocking the way, so it makes them actually quite easy to shoot down, like one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, of course, you know, when they're grouped in two, then you have to take them both down first before you can stomp them. So this door here is, it acts as an elevator. Once you go into this uh, women's bathroom over here, then you get teleported to a secret room on the second floor where you can grab shotgun shells and uh, two boxes of handgun bullets. So that's uh, six shotgun shells and 30 handgun bullets. The reason why I haven't been able to get a no save, no damage run of this yet is mostly because of the number of resets that I've had to do in this very section of the game. I think I have the bosses down pretty good. I just don't have the rest of this down. So we got the shotgun here. If we don't get the shotgun here, we can get it in the police station later, I've been told. But we gotta go into this far door over here, turn off the flashlight before we enter, and then head directly into the door that connects into this adjoining room with the telephones and a box of handgun bullets here. We gotta make sure to ready our gun whenever we come into the room because there is a cockroach, and he will actually attack you during the cutscene. YouTube, get the phone. Daddy? Help me. Daddy? Where are you? Cheryl! Going across the way here, we're going to this door here to get the rubber ball. Uh, it's just generally quicker to go through this door to get the rubber ball immediately. Well, later, I should say, after the after the telephone cutscene. Because these three are put in such a weird position, like you're going to be surrounded, so it's better to just go across the way back to the telephone room then uh, turn off your flashlight and come out of that room and then go directly up the stairs from there. So next up, we're gonna use the rubber ball on this hole up here on the roof. If I could uh, get the angle correct, then we have to check the other hole on the far right so that Harry will recognize that there is a key which will then enable us to turn the valve.
so now we have to go back downstairs to get the key, but not before we get the other key by... Well, okay, I guess we are going back downstairs to get the key. Anyway, so... Uh, yeah, this is, uh... This is, uh, quite risky. Quite a risky strat I just did. I just, like, shot him at the top of the stairs. Really, I should have just turned the flashlight off and walked to the door. Man, he almost closed the distance. He could have actually lunged at any time, but he didn't. I must have been in such an angle where the game thought that it couldn't grab me. If you're gonna kill these guys, you better hope they're both despawned when you come back in. Actually, that dodge works too. So, here's exactly what I need to do. We can still keep the flashlight on, but I think I would rather recommend turning off the flashlight. So the safest way to get the, uh, the uh, library key from the locker room, make sure we turn off the flashlight and go here. Go into the connecting door, then we can grab the shotgun shells here. There's going to be Demon Kid and Roaches to the left of us, so going across the hallway, there's going to be another Demon Kid and two more Roaches, but we're going to encounter the Roaches first. We have to hope that uh, Harry isn't going to RNG miss the Roaches on the way in, because if he misses either of the Roaches, then the Roaches will close the distance, they'll hit you, and there's nothing you can do about it. You can't even stomp the roaches. You have to actually shoot them before you can stomp them. Just a locker full of blood. Just a fucking dead kid in the locker! So now we have the library reserve key, and if we're lucky, then they shouldn't respawn here. If they do, then it's gonna be a lot tougher. I think that maybe dodging in that hallway either way might be safer, but I'm not entirely sure. Gotta make sure we turn off the flashlight going into this room. You can see that uh, whenever I mess up, and I have the flashlight on whenever I enter a room, I turn around and turn off the flashlight and come back in. We have to do this room in one pass. Uh, there's, a, there's a shelf there. It's actually quite... Oh, wow. Jeez, I wish I recorded a better segment here. I had no idea that uh, I came so close to getting hit so many times. I should have had better control over that. So shoot both these guys five, six times. Just go ahead and kill them. Sometimes they'll get they'll get back up. If they do, then you have to shoot them one or two more times before you can stomp them. Is the classroom key? Gotta make sure our flashlight is turned off I'm coming in through here. And uh, do the same thing we did on the first floor for this room, which is hug the wall, wait until Harry runs into a corner, then hug the wall again. And uh, as long as we keep hugging the wall, and we also have to exit and re-enter into this door. Right? No.
No, no, no. Okay, we were supposed to do that in one pass. I, shoot, man. Man, see, that's how that's how easy it is to get lost in Silent Hill. I'll even get lost while I am literally commentating a run. That's embarrassing. So before we fight the lizard, we can grab shotgun shells. There's also an ampoule there, but uh, ampoule doesn't really matter all that much. There's actually a much uh, safer, or a much uh, more ammo efficient strat if we use the handgun instead on the boss. We'll turn the right valve to the left twice, and then we'll turn the left valve to the right once. Okay, I do. So. The lizard has two phases. Once the lizard starts moving in a counterclockwise direction around the burning effigy, we're just gonna slowly walk up. And just sort of plant like, you know, two bullets at a time. Just try to make sure that we're maintaining a distance that is around uh, a quarter of the circumference of our location versus his location on the burning effigy. So, you know, just like, Whatever, about as far as you see in the video. Kind of a very specific description, but it's okay. And then once you hear, like, the uh, weird radio sounds and, you know... The silly drum beat. Trying to make things more intense. I see you there, Akira Yamaoka. Alright, so... We're going to take a slightly wider direction around the burning effigy, and then we are going to backstep during the second phase and uh, kind of try and be like 45 degrees, like make sure, you know, Harry is facing 45 degrees away from the lizard's mouth as such, so that when he actually does open his mouth, we are at minimum safe distance to plant a fucking shotgun shell in there while not getting our head bit off. It takes a while sometimes before his mouth opens. Also, the input lag on PS3 is a little tough to deal with. If you're emulating, there is always going to be input lag. Always. It's usually pretty bad input lag. This is why I prefer to play unemulated where possible. Because when you play unemulated, you have a lot more play with your timing. It takes about six or seven shots, depending on the uh, distance you are away from the lizard before he actually dies. But there you have it. That's the lizard. And also while he's dying, we can just like kind of bully him around a little bit. Arrgh. Huh? 
What was that? Who in the hell was that? So now we have to go to the church. Why did I head back in here? Oh, I guess I thought that there might be something in either of these doors for some reason. Oops. I wish I had a teleporting toilet in my school. So for the next segment, we are going to make a save in the school bus. On our way to use the K Gordon key. So between the bus and the K. Gordon house, there's only one enemy, just a dog. Gotta determine his position really quick and then we can just dodge him. Or you can shoot him. It's probably easier to shoot him if you're not too familiar with the exact angle of approach heading to that door. But because I already practiced the speed run enough, Going into that door is actually quite easy. A couple of handgun bullet boxes. We're going to be seeing air screamers again in a second here. The air screamer, as you can hear, is... Is my stereo reversed? What the fuck? Oh yeah, the stereo is hella reversed here. Dang it. I was hoping to explain things with some audio cues, but I can't even do that because I didn't record the audio correctly. Damn. Well. I can tell you this much. If you have a good pair of headphones, then you should be pretty aware of the direction that enemies are coming from. I think that headphones in general make for a better experience in general while playing video games. Also, you've probably been wondering for like the last 45 minutes, is it possible to beat the Samael boss without getting hit? Yes. It very much is.
Were you ringing that bell? I've been expecting you. It was foretold by gyromancy. What are you talking about? I knew you'd come. You want the girl, right? The girl? You're talking about Cheryl. I see everything. You know something. Tell me. Stay back. Nothing is to be gained from floundering about at random. You must follow the path. The path of the hermit concealed by Flauros. What? What are you talking about? Here, the Flauros, a cage of peace. It can break through the walls of darkness and counteract the wrath of the underworld. These will help you. Make haste to the hospital before it's too late. Wait, don't go yet. So now we have the Flaros and the Drawbridge Key. There is a rather tricky section here that we have to go through now. We'll go ahead and kill these two dogs here. Actually, don't even bother going into this garage here. There's a box of handgun bullets, but the dog outside that we just killed will almost always respawn the second we come back out. So it is absolutely not worth it to come in here. Except for this, this is like the one time that he didn't respawn. But he actually does respawn. Don't do that. Don't do what I just did. Also, don't do what I just did here, where I'm, like, walking towards the dog and shooting him while walking towards him. Because I actually should have gotten hit there. I should have just waited for him to walk towards me, and then as soon as I started shooting, I should have started walking back. Lastly... Uh, we are going to cross this street, this crosswalk here diagonally. There is an air screamer at the far right that has a lot more HP than he's supposed to have. And we also must not aggro him. Because if we do, then four more air screamers are just going to pop out of nowhere and just fucking gank us. So the safest thing to do is to just not aggro it and just generally avoid it and then run back across the bridge to get to the control center. Don't do half the stuff I'm actually doing. Yes, exactly, Twitch chat. Do as I say, not as I do. So if we're willing to take on the risk, we can actually go ahead and go to the police station, but uh, I've since rerouted this so that we can just straight up avoid the police station, period. As a matter of fact, that's what I would recommend, because otherwise we have to dodge two air screamers, one to the left and one to the right, and then we also have to dodge two rompers. Now rompers are probably the worst enemy in Silent Hill. They jump faster than you can run. And they also have an attack that moves exponentially faster than you can run. And then you get dashed and knocked over. 
so it's better to just straight up not aggro them where possible. But if you're feeling ballsy, you know, you can just come into the police station and uh, get yourself plenty of extra ammo. But like I said, I've rerouted this since then so that we use the rifle on Float Stinger instead of the shotgun, and we can actually save shotgun shells for the later sections of the game. Especially fighting against the Incubus. That's actually what it's called. It's it's not really Samael. It's an Incubus. We just dodge in between these police cars. The rompers get caught up there. Then we can just squeeze right on by here. Moving past the best store in all of Silent Hill. Just cats. Sometimes Harry has a tendency to move very slowly up these stairs. I have no idea why, but more often than not, it winds up... It ends up in getting hit by the dog as it's leaping towards you. Hold it! <gasps> Stop! Don't shoot! Wait! I'm not here to fight. My name is Harry Mason. I'm in town on vacation. Thank God. Another human being. Do you work here? I'm Dr. Michael Kaufman. I work at this hospital. So maybe you can tell me what's going on. I really can't say. I was taking a nap in the staff room. When I woke up, it was like this. Everyone seems to have disappeared. And it's snowing out, this time of year. Something's gone seriously wrong. Did you see those monsters? Have you ever seen such aberrations? Ever even heard of such things? You and I both know creatures like that don't exist. Yeah. Have you seen a little girl anywhere? I'm looking for my daughter. She's only seven. Short, black hair. She's missing. I'm sorry. But with all those monsters around, I highly doubt that she's... Sorry, I didn't mean to alarm you. Your wife, she's here with you. She died four years ago. Now it's just me and my daughter. I see. I'm sorry. Well, I'd better be going. I can't just sit around here doing nothing. So long. Good luck out there. So the first section of the hospital... The door on the far left over here at the corner where we need to go first so that we can get the basement storeroom key. Is it the basement storeroom key? I think that's what it is. I know. I just know we have to get that key before... Well, first we have to be able to get around that chair. We have to exit, and then we have to go through all four of these doors on this right side over here. Start by going into the kitchen and getting a bottle. Then we're going to go into the director's office. 
and suck up some of this spilled aglophytus on the floor. That's what the red liquid is, is aglophytus. Right, the basement key, that's what that key was. So now we can go down here, open this door, and then on the far, then on like exactly the left hand of the door that we just came out of. Same wall. Not opposite wall like I tried to do. Just 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 turn left and go directly to the first door on your left. We turn on the generator, then we go into the elevator. Then we have to go to second floor and third floor and check the doors. Then once we've checked both those doors, a uh, button for the fourth floor magically pops up. So whether you notice it or not, you're going to go there anyway. Hello? What am I doing? Must have been reading chat or something. So once we head out of the stairwell, we're going to go directly to the right. We're starting with the third floor. We go through these double doors here. And then first, double doors on the right. And then we grab the blood pack. These nurses over here, they take anywhere between four to six shots to kill. Uh, four shots if they are the blue nurses. Actually, like eight shots if they're the green nurses. Blue nurse, which only takes like four shots. Then we go into the door next to the blue nurse that was guarding it. And miraculously, we uh, we respond behind the nurse who grabs us. But you know, I'm not gonna we're not gonna count that as damage because it doesn't actually do damage to get grabbed. Now you can get hit while getting grabbed, but if you shake it off fast enough, then you don't take any damage. It's just like in Resident Evil Code Veronica. Also, the nurses only grab you if there are other nurses around to stab you while you are being grabbed. These doctors here take about, like, what, 10 handgun bullets to kill? There aren't very many doctors in the hospital, though. Of course, he just, like, spawns right in front of me. What a fucker. I tried to kick these guys so that they would hopefully not respawn later, but I think I think dodging them is probably the best bet. It's probably your best option, just straight up. And then we take the stairs up to the second floor. We'll 
turn left and go through the first door to the left. So there's going to be a nurse in here. A blue nurse. So while she's like groaning and shrugging her shoulders, she can't die. But she can still take damage and you can still deplete her HP down to zero. Once we exit here, we're going to go to the farthest door on the left. And uh, really you just have to move forward one step before using the blood pack, but I kind of got the angle wrong there. Oh, Lord, is that some blood? Those tentacles just, like, look so excited to get that blood. It's like they don't even- they don't even need a face to make an expression. The way they move, they're like- they're like- They're like excited puppy dogs or something. Anyway. So, the solution to the puzzle is uh, place the tiles in a clockwise motion, starting from the top tile. And we start with the plate of turtle in the top right, because it's blue like a sunny sky. Then the hatter at the bottom right, green lucky four-leaf clover, yellow dandelions, Stick in the bottom left. And then the queen likes to paint everything red. Blood flowing from a slashed wrist. Top left. Then directly across, double doors. Gotta make sure to kill both of the nurses here. Or just one. But, you know, I'm just gonna kind of kick one. Safest bet is to actually kill both. Same with this nurse here, just gun her right the fuck down. Basement storeroom key, and hopefully we shouldn't have the nurse respawn on the way back, and we didn't. It's just the other nurse that was on the other end of the room. If you shoot the nurses enough, then occasionally you can interrupt their attacks, but generally you want to backpedal while fighting them. last door we have to visit is the double doors on the right. The radio will go off, but don't worry, there's no enemies in here. And now we're going to take the elevator down to floor B1. There's a nurse down here, but as long as we turn the flashlight off, or we can just run, actually, that works too. But in general, the nurse's attacks are so slow that, you know, we're not really going to get hit. The only thing we have to worry about is the grab. That's the only th attack that is quick enough to put you at risk. There's some shotgun shells on the shelf here. Definitely need those. Definitely need as many shotgun shells as we can grab. So absolutely want to grab those shotgun shells. We're going to use the disinfecting alcohol and the vines here. And we're going to throw a lighter. There's going to be a good number of nurses down here, but they're going to be too slow to grab. Just take wide arc. So the first door on the left over here next to that other nurse, and then the last door on the left here. What's this? I accidentally skipped a cutscene, but he walks over to check the picture. 
picture says Alessa. We got the examining room key, which is the key to our escape. Also, I completely missed picking up the VHS tape as well in this run. I apologize for that. Whenever I do the 10 star run, I'll uh, be sure to keep that. If we go into the generator room over here, we can pick up the emergency hammer, which is the strongest melee weapon in the game. We don't really need it though. Melee attacking in this game is so incredibly clunky, I would not recommend it. It's not necessary. So because there's no other uh, enemies in here, you can just go ahead and dodge around the doctor or shoot him if you prefer. who's okay. Who are you? My name's Lisa Garland. What's yours? Harry Mason. Harry, tell me what's happening here. Where is everybody? I must have gotten knocked out. When I came to, everyone was gone. It's awful. So you don't know anything either. Great. I just don't get it. It's like this is all some kind of bad dream. Yeah, a living nightmare. Let me ask you, have you seen a little girl around here? Short, black hair, seven years old? A seven-year-old girl? What, she's your daughter? Yes. A seven-year-old girl. I can't say that I have. I was unconscious all this time. I'm sorry. <sighs> That's all right. Do you know anything about all that weird stuff in the basement? No. Why? Is there something down there? You don't know? Don't you work here? We're under strict orders never to enter the basement storeroom. So I really don't know. What did you say was down there? Well, it's... <clears throat> Damn! My head! What's wrong? Harry? Harry. Let me help you. Harry? Was I dreaming? You were too late. It's you. Yes, Dahlia Gillespie. Tell me everything you know. What's going on? Darkness. The town is being devoured by darkness. Strength must overcome petty desire, childish sleep talk. I knew this day would come. What are you talking about? I don't understand a word of this. 
believe the evidence of your eyes. The other church in this town, that is your destination. This is beyond my abilities. Only you can stop it now. Have you not seen the crest marked on the ground all over town? So that's what I saw in the schoolyard. What does it mean? It is the mark of Samael. Don't let it be completed. Hey, wait! So next up, we are headed... ...to the antique shop next. Once again, Harry is uh, going very, very slow down the stairs. Those stairs fucking suck. Maybe I should probably consider a better strat for those. Maybe use the shotgun there instead. To, like, take him out of the air. What's this? Harry! Sybil? Ah, oh, I'm glad you're okay. I shouldn't have left you. Things are worse than I thought. It's nuts! What are you doing here? I thought you left town. I saw you go in here, so I followed you. I couldn't get out. All the roads out of town are blocked. Cars have completely stopped running. The phones and radios are still out too. What about my daughter? Did you see her? I did see a girl. Was it Cheryl? I only caught a glimpse of her through the fog. I went after her, but she vanished. I don't know about your daughter, but... And you just let her go? Where was it? On Bachman Road. She was heading towards the lake. Now don't get excited. It wasn't like she ran off, exactly. There was no place for her to go. The road has been obliterated. What? So then Cheryl... It was like she was walking on thin air. Hmm? What about you? Anything? Yeah, I met this bizarre woman. Her name's Dahlia Gillespie. Do you know her? Dahlia Gillespie? No. And? She said something about the town being devoured by darkness. Gibberish like that. Any idea what it means? Darkness devouring the town? Must be on drugs. They sell them to the tourists. 
the Force still can't figure out who's behind it. None of our leads have panned out, and the investigation is stalled. What could drug trafficking have to do with all this? Hmm. I really don't know. But maybe that's the darkness she was talking about. That's all I can think of. Hmm. What's this? Just discovered it. Maybe there's something back there. Let's have a look. Wait. We don't know what's back there. I'd better check it out first. I'm a cop. I should go. No. I'm going. All right. I'll cover you from here. Be careful. If anything looks fishy, get back here on the double. Okay. Sybil? Yeah? Do you know anything about... Well, like some other world? It's like some kind of bad dream? What are you talking about? I'm not quite sure. I try to make sense of it, but then my mind goes blank. Everything's dark there, and I hear sirens in the distance. I met this nurse, Lisa. It's like I was there, but not really. It's all a blur, like some kind of hallucination, you know? I have no idea what you're talking about, Harry. Oh. I was just wondering. Never mind. Harry. You're tired. Yeah, maybe. This is the other church. <gasps> what the? Harry? Are you okay? Harry. Lisa? Then I'm in the hospital? You were having a bad dream. Was I? Hey, you don't look too good. Are you okay? I'm fine. Nothing you need to worry about. Well, if you're sure... Lisa. Do you know a woman named Dahlia Gillespie? Oh yeah, that crazy Gillespie lady. She's kind of famous around here. She never sees anybody, so I don't know that much about her. But I heard her kid died in a fire, and supposedly she's been crazy ever since. Well, she says the town is being devoured by the darkness. Do you have any idea what she's talking about? 
A town devoured by the darkness. Yes, I think I do. Before this place was turned into a resort, the townspeople here were on the quiet side. Everybody followed some kind of queer religion. Weird occult stuff, black magic, that kind of thing. As young people moved away, the people figured they'd been summoned by the gods. Evidently, things like that used to happen around here all the time. Before the resort, there really wasn't anything else out here. Everyone was so flipped out, you gotta blame it on something. Then a lot of new people came in and everybody clammed up about it. A cult? Last time I heard anything about it was, gosh, years ago. When several people connected with developing the town died in accidents. People said it was a curse. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm rambling. I'll shut up. Was that another dream? Did I pass out again? Uh, oh, 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 that was that was a that was a good nap. It was a fucking fantastic nap, actually. Oh, oh, okay, all right. So next we are going to fight the second boss, Twin Feeler. We're going to go into this hole in the grating over here. gone up the escalator. We can go into this door over here. There's actually a save point here as well. Probably would have been better for me to save there, but... I'm a badass and I don't need to save there. We gotta equip the shotgun as we are falling, or before, but the shotgun is the weapon that we want to use against Twin Feeler. So here's what's up. We gotta stay on this mesh the whole time. And uh, generally be facing, just kinda, just kinda, you know, hold up and left and run. As soon as you hear him coming out of the ground, because he will spit acid, so whatever direction Twin Feeler is facing when he comes out, is very, very unsafe. It takes about six or seven shots to kill Twin Feeler. Or, or I should say, to make Twin Feeler run away.
we also want to pick up the rifle on the way out. Because we are going to use the rifle on the next boss. Well, not in this particular demonstration. Do as I say, not as I do. But the same strat applies. So from here, we actually want to keep the flashlight turned off. Because these uh, alternate air screamers, I actually have no idea what they're called. We just want to make sure they don't hit us. And uh, generally we're going to try to deviate towards the right hand side as much as possible because we can go to the police station, there's going to be more rifle shells that we can pick up. And so the rifle shells in the police station, the rifle shells already in the rifle, and the rifle shells in the antique shop, or the jewelry shop rather, from the mall are going to be exactly enough to be able to kill Float Stinger with. We don't really need much else. I'm pretty sure I used the shotgun in this run anyway. Harry! Glad you're okay. Thank God you came back. I was scared to be here all alone. I'm here now. I was worried too. I'm real happy to see you. Lisa, can you tell me how to get to the lake? The lake? You take Bachman Road. The road's blocked. Well, that's the only way out there. Are you sure? There's gotta be another way. Wait! I just remembered something! There's a waterworks over by my old elementary school. It's been abandoned for years. There's an underground tunnel out there used for inspections or something. I remember hearing it runs all the way to the lake. Really? You think I can get to the lake from there? I've never been down in there myself, so I'm not positive. Besides, it's all fenced off to keep people out. If there's a chance, I've got to try. Harry, don't go! I don't want to be alone. It's so scary, I can't stand it. How about coming with me? This may not be the safest place in the world, either. I can't promise you anything, but I'll do my best to protect you. No. Somehow I feel I'm not supposed to leave this place. Oh, Harry. I'm so scared. I'm cold. Look, just wait here a little longer. I'll be back as soon as I find my daughter. Harry? So, Float Stinger. This is actually a pretty difficult boss. Not as, uh, I would say not as difficult as the Incubus. But once you get the pattern down, it's uh, actually pretty easy. So in general, we want to make sure that when Harry is running around here, it is done in a completely perfect circle. Float Stinger will spit acid and uh, basically we have to release the run button while Harry is running around. I have my controls set so that Harry does not run automatically. I have to hold the run button to run. 
But uh, after the acid spit, we have to make sure that we don't stutter step. If we stutter step, then we don't take the shot. Like that. I didn't take the shot after I stutter step there while trying to come to a complete stop. But generally, after he spits acid, the trajectory of the acid is locked. So we shouldn't have to worry about getting hit. And uh, sometimes he can close the distance after you shoot. And if he does that, then what we do after shooting, which is hold up and left and run after the shot, basically it's like while we're buffering, while we're shooting, we're buffering our running inputs to go up and left and run like that. So you can see I completely avoided the attack. I completely avoided the physical attack, which actually comes out a lot quicker than the acid. And basically it can like, it's at such an interval that he can interrupt his, uh, his recovery from the acid spit. But he never spits acid very fast. It's always like very timely. Holding up and right, shoot, hold up and left. He missed. I have no idea if it's like an angle or something that causes the melee attack to miss or Yeah, it's it's usually just usually just straight up avoiding it. But it's like by holding up and left, we can go right back into running in circles quite easy. As the music gets more and more and more intense, that's the closer to death that Float Stinger is. And there we go, dead Float Stinger. Yay. If you haven't grabbed the ammo from the police station, you could, but uh, the two air screamers and rompers are still outside of the police station, so I would uh, I would not advise that. If you used the rifle instead of the shotgun, you could do the same strat with the rifle, and it would work exactly the same way. As a matter of fact, I'd go as far as to say that it's uh, probably easier due to the timing of raising the rifle and lowering the rifle is actually is actually probably better than the shotgun but if you use the rifle instead of the shotgun then you actually don't need to pick up the shotgun shells from the uh police station Sewers are kind of tough. But we'd be ending the segment over here. So there are two cockroaches hiding behind either side of this archway. I'm going to try to move close ever so slowly, inching towards it, and bap! Get rid of one. Then we're going to run to the other side.
And then the other one is going to come out from around the corner, and we are going to shoot him as well. Put our right foot in the undulating bug. If we have any remaining rifle shells, we can just use them on regular enemies here, because they're not going to be particularly useful on any other boss. Here. There's two of them. Again, sometimes enemies can respawn, so we gotta be careful. There's gonna be a third around the corner here. six rifle shells. Rifles... Rifle rounds are good against uh, these guys. I don't, I, don't, I don't actually know what they're called, but my chat likes to call them ninja turtles, so we'll just go, we'll just go along with that. Sure, why not? Gonna load up from the sewers. One of these, uh, I guess, ninja turtles or whatever is just kind of sitting up there. Sometimes you can get a crit on that guy and kill him, but it's more fun to just like shoot him a couple of times and run under him as he drops to the ground. Because he's a dumbass for hanging around up there anyway. We're just gonna kind of hug on the on the right side over here. It's gonna be another guy directly in front of us. Bang bang. Skid skid. avoid the cockroaches as long as we stay on one side and merc the other. But uh, generally you can just run straight through cockroaches as long as like three of them don't crowd you. Otherwise I uh, would generally recommend taking out cockroaches one at a time, especially if there are other enemies that you need to shoot. If there is other enemies that you need to shoot, always prioritize the cockroaches first.
The music's gotten really intense here. Gotta make sure that we equip the shotgun for this, because on the way out, we have to gun down one of them. It's gonna be three of them, but there's gonna be a little bit of an extra buffer before they actually start moving, so we can go ahead and uh, we have the initiative. Three shots. Also, for some reason, after I shot the third time, Harry just like kind of homed in on the other. I have no idea what causes that, but it just happened very, very automatically. We shouldn't have to worry about any more of these guys for a couple more rooms. Again, no idea what they're called, so I just call them Ninja Turtles because whatever. I have the Silent Hill Guide somewhere. I'm sure I'd be able to look up the name if I could find it, but... Anyway, we have to approach that gate without bonking it and without getting hit by that enemy. It'd probably be better to just go ahead and shoot the rest of them. So upon exiting the ladder, we can just head directly right, try to keep a low profile on our way to the bar. Also, I just narrowly avoided getting knocked down by that romper. Hanged Scratcher, that's what those guys are called. Thank you, chat. Are you okay? Yeah, I guess so. But I'm beat. I thought I was a goner there. So how'd it go? Did you find a way out? No, not yet. How about you? Zip. But it's too soon to give up. This craziness can't go on forever. A military rescue squad should be here any time now. If they come through the town, we're home free. I hope so. I better get going. This isn't the time to stand around flapping our gums. Do you know a girl called Alessa? No. So we can grab the Kaufman key here now. Also, the enemy that uh, Harry gunned down in that cutscene is uh, what the demon children are replaced with in the European version. And also, I believe, the Japanese version. Actually, yes, it is also the Japanese version. The demon children are exclusive to the US version. They're called mumblers. Upon exiting the bar, we're gonna shut off our flashlight. And then we're going to head to the general store to pick up some rifle ammo. Actually, we don't even need to go that direction, but it's actually a ways riskier to go here, which is uh, why I no longer do this. Whenever I finally get around to doing no save, no damage, I'm uh, definitely not going to go to this general store. Four seven
could actually keep going this way with the flashlight on if we wanted to, but there's going to be another aerial enemy on the way to this other keypad. Actually, we got a little lucky. He started just like on the ground. The code to the keypad is 0886. Then we grab the magnet. Then use the Kaufman key on room three of the motel. Push the shelf. Use the magnet. in order to get the motorcycle key. Doing this Kaufman side quest will actually get you the best ending. Well, it puts you on the path, rather, to getting the good ending. You can still get the good ending and Sybil can still die, but we got the Aglophitus from the hospital because we want to save both Sybil we want to save Sybil and kill the Incubus to get the best ending. Give me that! What is this? That's none of your business. Instead of messing with that, how about coming up with a way to get out of here? You shouldn't be hanging around here goofing off. What do you think you're doing? You want to get yourself killed? Get out of here. Okay, take it easy. Unless you want to die, keep your mind on business. Got it? There were also some shotgun shells next to the bike, in case you didn't see that I had picked them up. So on the way to the other world resort, we have to keep the flashlight turned off and head towards the bridge, towards the west. What's this? So we're going to hug the set of buildings on the south side of the road. In order to avoid rompers and uh, aerial screamers. 
I think that's what they're called. The other world. The other world flying enemies. So once we dodge past the, uh, once we dodge past that aerial screamer or whatever it is, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the flashlight back on, dodge in between some dogs and stuff. That that whole area is just a clusterfuck. It's probably just better overall to just run through them all. Then Q cutscene. Sybil. Harry. How did you get back here? I followed the sewer. Were you the one who cut the fence? I'm glad you made it. I was worried about you. You were worried? Where did you disappear to? Never mind. I want to know what's going on here. What is with this town? This may sound really off the wall, but listen to me. I haven't gone crazy, and I'm not fooling around. At first, I thought I was losing my mind. But now I know I'm not. It's not me. This whole town. It's being invaded by the other world world of someone's nightmarish delusions come to life. Little by little, the invasion is spreading, trying to swallow up everything in darkness. I think I'm finally beginning to understand what that lady was talking about. Harry, hold on a minute. I don't get it. Look, I don't understand it all myself. I guess I can't explain it. What's making this happen? I don't know that either. But I do know Cheryl is there. There? Under whoever created this darkness. Cheryl is somewhere and she needs my help. This whole thing's been a major blow to you. You need to rest. Sybil, I... The demon is awakening, spreading those wings! Dahlia Gillespie. Was it not as I said? I see it all now. Yes, everything. Hungry for sacrifice, the demon will swallow up the land. I knew this day would come. And what's more, the task is almost finished. There's only two left. To seal this town to the abyss, the mark of Samael. When it is completed, all is lost. Even in daytime, darkness will cover the sun. The dead will walk and martyrs will burn in the fires of hell. Damn, she sounds Everyone way too delighted. Will die. So what am I supposed to do? I've got to save Cheryl. It is simple. Stop the demon. The demon, the demon taking that child's form. Stop it before your daughter becomes a sacrifice. Before it is too late. Stop it! Stop it! What do I do? Go to the lighthouse on the lake. And to the center of the amusement park. Make haste. You are the only hope. Look, Harry. I really don't get what's going on. But if there's a chance we can save your daughter, I'm in. I'll check out the amusement park. You go to the lighthouse. Sybil, thanks. You will need 
need to use it. Use what? The Flowers. Only with that can you stop it. What about Sybil? The next section is the next section here is actually quite brutal. But we can actually do most of it with just walking and keeping the flashlight off. So for here, we're going to go up the stairs and then move Harry diagonally so that he's hugging the railing over here, and as he's hugging the railing, he will just automatically go down the stairs because he is positioned to do so, then just a couple of slants. We do it very slowly, you can actually see the uh, boards and whatnot. And then there's a uh, couple of harambes over there and uh, you know then we're gonna go up the stairs here and then the camera angle is gonna change at which point we uh, there's gonna be a, a night flutter is actually what they are called they are called night flutterers the night flutterers will not hit you as long as your flashlight is still off it's definitely a lot safer to do this with the flashlight turned off but uh, once you climb this final set of stairs near the lighthouse, you can actually turn the flashlight back on and you'll be fine. Keeping the light turned off makes use of the rudimentary stealth mechanics of Silent Hill. If you keep the light off and you walk, then you can actually move around enemies and they will never detect you. If you run, then they can hear you, they know that they know that you're there, and they will try to move in on your general position, but their attack is actually made a lot slower, so it's a lot harder for them to hit you when it's dark. But uh, coming out here, once you come right back outside, the flashlight is always going to be automatically on, so the enemies are going to close in on you immediately. And the only choice you have is to shoot the dog with the shotgun on the way out. You have to be ready for him. Sybil hasn't come back. That creep's sure to show up at the amusement park pretty soon. Let me be on time. So on the way to the second sewer section, there's going to be two more dogs. We're going to sit over here and wait for one of the dogs to come downstairs. We hold L1 to position the camera behind the back of Harry's head. These guys are like moving in pretty tight circles. I just kind of dodged through them, but it looked like the way that I was sitting there, I probably could have shot them through the rail because they couldn't have moved past it, but I'm pretty sure that I could have shot them through the rail. That's uh, probably worth testing in the future. Who knows, maybe that might actually help me whenever I finally do a no save, no damage run of this.
So there's a couple of these uh, hanged scratchers, formerly known as Ninja Turtles, hanging around at the top over here. But there's one on the ground already closing in. I gotta turn that down a little bit, my bad. It takes about seven shots before they die, and you generally don't have to stomp them. But then pick a direction, either left or right. I'm pretty sure I can't hit them while they're falling. But once one of those guys is down, then we can go proceed to the next area. And we'll see a couple of the mumbler enemies. We actually do have to fight mumblers down here instead of demon children. You can just barely see the hanged scratcher there in the distance. Which is why I'm trying to go ahead and shoot him as far away as I can. If they're hanging up there, then they actually won't close in on you. Ah, but see, I got too close to that guy as he was coming down. I thought that I planted enough bullets in him to kill him. These guys have a lot of health. Anyway, once you deal with the hanged scratchers, you shouldn't have to fight the mumblers. And by hugging the left wall here on the way over, it should be good. Uh, sometimes the mumblers can teleport directly in front of you, and uh, when they do, it's uh, probably best to use the shotgun here. But it's those same mumblers from earlier, they just they just teleport. I actually got lucky on dodging over there. I don't even know why I went into the menu to reload here. Now we can exit up the ladder. So there's uh, some invisible. There's some invisible uh, children over here. Larval, larval something or other. Larval squeakers, I guess. If you use the if you use the aglophitus bottle on the first one you see, you can actually uh, you can actually glitch to winning the civil fight. But we're just gonna go directly to the civil fight because I want to show off those cutscenes in their natural, unglitched state. But all you have to do is walk up to Sybil, just like straight up walk up to her, or let her walk up to you, and as she's winding up for an attack, just use the Aglophitus bottle on her and you win the fight. Pretty much in no context is it uh, necessary for you to get the bad ending to win because it's always going to be faster to use the Aglophitus on Sybil. And it is always going to be safer to use the Aglophitus on Sybil. So it actually takes effort to get the bad endings in this game. Comparatively speaking. Uh, 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 uh. 
Sybil. Wake up. Snap out of it. Sybil. Harry. What happened? Shh. Don't talk. I'll take care of you. Harry. Why did they take your daughter? Why her? I'm not sure myself. But, you know, Cheryl isn't my biological daughter. I actually haven't told her yet. She probably already knows anyway, though. We found her abandoned on the side of the highway. Nobody knew where she came from. We didn't have any kids of her own. My wife was sick. And it didn't look like she was getting any better. So we took Cheryl in. So in that case... There might be some connection between Cheryl and this town. So what do you do now? Cheryl is my daughter. I will save her no matter what. Hold it right there. I don't know who you are or what you're trying to do, and I don't care. Just one thing. Let Cheryl go. That's all I ask. What? Where's Cheryl? Where is she? Alessa. This is the end of your little game. Mama? Huh? Could she be? You've been a ghastly little pest, haven't you, Alessa? I was careless. Thinking you couldn't escape from our spell. But Mommy didn't know how much you'd grown. That's why I couldn't catch you all by myself. But what a pity, yes? Now you're half indebted to this man for his help. Hey, what are you talking about? Alessa, my dear little girl, there is one thing left I need you to do for me. No! Get away from me! Bad girl. Everything's ready. Let's go home. Mm -hmm. What's going on here?
Lisa. What happened? Where's Alessa and Dahlia? Harry, listen. Something you said before has been bothering me. I just can't get it out of my head. What is it, Lisa? So I went to look in the basement. Even though I was scared as hell. Like you said, there were these creepy rooms. But nothing really unusual down there. But while I was down there, I got this weird feeling. Like I'd been there before. Like something happened there. But I can't quite remember somehow. What was it? Harry, help me. I'm so scared. I can't take this. It's only a temporary thing. You're in shock from when you were knocked out. Don't fret about it. You'll remember after a while. No. You don't understand. Wait! Where do you think you're going? I hope you guys enjoyed that extra big-ass cutscene. I'm being summoned. What happened in this town? What could be making things like this? I have a feeling if I take the elevator down, I'll find it. Cheryl. So first up, we're going to take a door that will lead us into what would appear to be the hospital basement, but it actually leads us into a classroom. And then we go through this door, which takes us into one of the rooms in the hospital, ostensibly the one where we got either the lighter or the disinfectant, whatever, fuck you, it's a room from the hospital. Then we're going back up the stairs. By the way, this whole area is shaped like a Mobius, so just like, you know, don't try to make any sense of it. We'll just run around these nurses because the hallway is wide enough to do so. And then we'll take the door to the right of the elevator doors and then use the pliers to wrench the key of Ophiel out. Now we have to go to the Ophiel door. And the Ophiel door is this door right there. Then we go to the second door on the left, and we can go to solve the first puzzle. For the bull, we hit four because bulls have four legs. For the centaur, we hit six because the centaur has four legs and two arms. For the dancing children, we hit eight, because that's eight limbs total. And now we have the stone plate, and now we can leave. Once we leave, a nurse will spawn here, to the left, but that's to the left, we don't have to worry about it. A, L, E, R, T. 
T is the code. Now we grab the amulet of Solomon. Here. Lisa, what's the matter with you? I get it now. Why I'm still alive even though everyone else is dead. I'm not the only one who's still walking around. I'm the same as them. I just hadn't noticed it before. Lisa. Stay by me, Harry. Please. I'm so scared. Help me. Save me from them. Please. Harry. <laughs> <laughs> So after grabbing the uh, clock plate, we go into this room here, which is apparently, I don't know, like, like the antique shop. Then we get the key of Ophiel after using the plate of time or whatever it is. And we go to the third floor on this elevator. Again, nothing about the structure of this makes sense. I might actually include a map of where you're supposed to go. In the uh, pinned comment, because that makes sense. A friend of mine, a speedrunner named Plywood, actually made a map of where you're supposed to go for the uh, nowhere section of the speedrun. So I'll probably like repost that and link that for you guys. So look for it in the pinned section or in the pinned comment in the description. But basically because all the rooms are disjointed and they make no fucking sense, we're uh, just going to keep going and I'll kind of describe what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, so we can muscle that nurse out of the way. She actually won't turn. And we can just go directly into the door she's guarding and grab the Ring of Solomon and also the Crest of Mercury. And there's some rifle shells here too. Then we unlock this door over here. Head to the right. Ophiel door. Except not really, because we weren't supposed to go through the Ophiel door. We were supposed to go into this door. 
which is where we use the birdcage key. Then we get the key of Phalig. We can go in here, and uh, once we use the key of Phalig and go in here, we have to turn off the light. Then go into the first door on the right. Take the dagger of Melchior. Then use the ring of contract. We quick turn and then we strafe run across the wall while mashing X to open the door. We gotta make sure the light is out because these uh, shadow children are fucking assholes. Run across the way. I accidentally skipped a cutscene of Alessa crying in a corner. Sorry about that. Run directly across. The reason I choose to do this is so we reset the room every time, then turn off the light, strafe across, go back into the room with the dagger of Melchior, then run across. Turn off the generator. Turn around, then we can head out the door this way. Turning off the generator will turn off the elevator. We have to go into the door that we unlocked over here. And then we're going to turn off the light and we're just going to move slowly because there's shadow children here now. And at the last door at the end of the hallway here, we're going to go in through here, turn the flashlight back on. And because we turned the generator off, we can now use the screwdriver here and safely pick up the key. The key of Eratron, which leads to the final item. On the way back, uh, we run in exactly this pattern while keeping the flashlight turned on. Shadow children have replaced the nurses. In order to go to the Eratron door, we're just going to go through all these doors one at a time in order to safely move around the shadow children. Then I'm going to go diagonally across because there's a gurney there, which prevents me from taking a straight shot to the Eratron door. We can go ahead and go th to the Eratron door with the flashlight turned on if we want. Everything is going according to plan, sheltered in the womb. But it's not done yet. Half the soul is lost. That is why the seed lies dormant. And what soul remains captured in that husk is buried deep down in the subconscious. Are you trying to say it won't work? That wasn't our agreement. No, no, these are just stalling tactics. If we lend a hand, we will be able to get power. Never fear, the promise shall not be broken. But the power we could draw now will be very weak. Almost nothing. Unless we get the other half of the soul. We'll use a magical spell. Feeling this child's pain, it's sure to come. But that will take time. There's the final item, the Disc of Ouroboros. We go across the way and we can use all five of the items on this door, which will take us to the final boss.
Actually, I uh, wanted to have the shotgun equipped here, but it's okay. Do what mommy tells you now. I just want you to lend me a teeny bit of your power. That's all. No. I don't want to do it. It will make everyone happy. And it's for your own good, too. Oh, but mommy, I just want to be with you. Just two of us. Please understand. Oh, yes, I see. Maybe Mommy has been wrong. Mommy! Why didn't I see this before? There's no reason to wait. Herein lies the mother's womb, containing the power to create life. I could have done it all myself. Mommy? After this cutscene, just, uh... Turn out, save the game, ready ourselves for the final boss. Now a lot of you have been uh, most certainly wondering by this point, well, how do you deal the final how do you deal with the final boss? Well after a lot of tries and uh, a lot of deliberation on how to exactly do this, I came up with a strat. Not too far removed from the speedrun strat, obviously. Gotta make sure that we equip the uh, Shotgun, but uh, did I did I use the rifle for this? Okay, no, good. But I had just barely enough ammo to do this. I'll try to explain it as best I can. I was shocked to realize the talisman of Metrotron was being used. In spite of the lost soul returning at last. Just a little longer and all would have been for naught. It's all because of that man. We must be thankful to him. Even though Alessa has been stopped. His little girl has to go. What a pity. <laughs> Freeze! What in the devil's name? Ugh. Dahlia. Well, well, well. To think you'd make it this far. Where's Cheryl? What have you done to her? What are you talking about? You've seen her many times, restored to her former self. I'm in no mood for jokes. Don't you see? She's right there. That's absurd. You are the only one who thinks so. Why? Why are you doing this? It's been a long seven years. For the seven years since that terrible day, Alessa has been kept alive, suffering a fate worse than death. Alessa has been trapped in an endless nightmare from which she never awakens. He has been nurtured by that nightmare, waiting for the day to be born. 
That day has finally come. The time is nigh. Everyone will be released from pain and suffering. Our salvation is at hand. This is the day of reckoning. When all our sorrows will be washed away. When we return to the true paradise. My daughter will be the mother of God. this? Nobody uses me. You won't get away with this. Your work is over. We don't need you anymore. What do you think you can accomplish by coming here? My, would be getting cocky. Bet you can't see this. I thought I got rid of that! All I had to do was plant it somewhere for you to find. You all well, kept you busy. Ha! You're easy. And there's more where this came from. Stop it! Yeah, I'd react that way if I got Tabasco sauce all over me, too. Huh? What the? Okay, so, Incubus, a quick rundown of the mechanics. Uh, Incubus' lightning attack lasts for about 5 seconds or so. Whenever he's charging up for his lightning attack, he actually takes, uh, like, quadruple damage or something like that. He has about 40,000 HP. So here's the dealio. Once he charges, once you see a ball of light, that's when we start running around in a perfect circle. It has to be a perfect circle, and you have to set yourself up to run in a perfect circle, because if you bonk, you get hit. But it's usually after you hear, like, four lightning crackles strike down that uh, the boss is finished with that attack cycle, and then you can go in and shoot him. But yeah, he actually falls pretty quickly. Uh, we can't use the timeout strat on hard either, because it takes five minutes for him to die. Say you have no ammo, it takes five minutes. As opposed to 30 seconds on easy and normal.
Sub Heather, how's it going? That's it for this run. Also, this is like the best ending music of any survival horror game ever. I really love it. Want to give a shout out to the Silent Hill speedrunning community, especially Aaron, Techie, Plywood, Succinct and Punchy. There's probably like one or two more people here. Hang on. Just want to make sure that I'm not like missing anyone who helped me with the. Uh, learning the route. I think I got everyone. And just like valuable input otherwise in being able to complete this run. Orafine. Actually, Orafine was a huge help in helping me remember like the names of some of these enemies. But anyways... Uh, that's it. I'm uh, currently working on Silent Hill 2 Segmented No Damage right now. And, uh, should probably be uploading that within, like, a couple of weeks. If you like what you see, please, uh, subscribe to the channel. Also check out my Twitch channel at twitch.tv slash carcinogensda. I record all of my commentary live there. Say hi, YouTube. For other information, you know, like notifications on when I upload videos or what have you, you can follow my Twitter at twitter.com slash carcinogensda or join my Discord server at discord.gg slash carcinogensda. But definitely please check out my Twitch channel. I stream there full time. Now for the outtake reel.
But yeah, once again, uh, any extra supplementary material for this run can be found in the pinned comment below this video. Pretty sure the next uh, video that I will upload from Silent Hill 1 will be a 10 star run, which I will try to do without saving. But I might have to use saves. I don't know. We'll see. Also, the in game timer is completely different from real time. This entire video is about the span of 2 hours 45 minutes, but you can see the end game time only counts the time that you actually control Harry or are in menus. So it's about an hour, 8 minutes and 32 seconds. But yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching and uh, see you guys next video.